Withinshaw, Manchester. Hidden away in an industrial estate is Pyle Events, run by Raj Samaya. At the end of the day, I'm the gaffer, I'm the boss, and the book stops here. We'd rather put our people on that table than them fucking putting their ding dongs on there. Raj's team are gearing up for wedding season, vying for a share of a multi million pound market. See, boss, do it in a banana leaf. Yeah, have you got some banana leaf? Good boy. Uh, Mr. Craig, he's pretending to do some work. He does absolutely going, fuck all. He's going to, uh, horrible, racist bastard. We only employ him because he's white. And he like yeah. talks to all the white people. He likes the white people. Martin is Raj's right-hand man. They worked together for 17 years. I think in the beginning, some clients were a little bit wary. Uh, seeing a big fat white boy doing their wedding. But I know most of the Indian community, some of them drink in the same bars and clubs I drink, so it's took a while, but crikey, 17 years, I've grown up with most of them, you know. Three generations of Raj's family also work for the company. The founder of the business, mate. This is it, this is where it all started. Miss Pyle Events. Everybody knows Mrs. Samaya. She's my mum, literally, but everyone calls her mum in the company. Competition in the industry is fierce. And Nephew Cab is spearheading the company's drive to expand in the South. I can trust him with everything. He's a family member. Because in our Asian community, unfortunately, everyone stabs each other in the back. Bring it home. I mean, bring it on. He's actually doing a really good job. He's so passionate. But he's just a little bit angry. He's an angry man. No. No. Hey, Ali, can you send another pump up when he's got him in place? The next eight weeks are going to be critical for the business. Raj wants to establish Pyle as the go-to company for the UK's most extravagant weddings. So we've got to grow our business. I think we can do more, but I'm a little bit nervous to make sure that we um, do deliver to the clients. <laughs> The 21-year-old business analyst, Rukmini, lives in Watford, near her parents. I guess I just always imagined myself marrying an English man. I met him at work, so I just, you know, fell in love with him, what can you say? <laughs> the rest is history. She's very attractive and gets a lot of attention. Um, so I'm very proud that she's marrying me. <laughs> we didn't need them to go on for another, like, four hours. It was so nerve-wracking introducing Craig to my parents. A lot of Indian parents, unfortunately, they don't approve. I told my mum first, and then I had to get her to tell my dad. We almost practised like if it was going to be an interview. So we've been fortunate that we were able to judge him very quickly that this person seems genuine, and that's good enough for us. They're obviously just concerned that I'll be a good husband to her, take her off their hands. <laughs> she can be a handful sometimes. <laughs> Gloria, Gloria. Rukmini met Craig two years ago and has chosen the most traditional of British venues to get married, Blenheim Palace the ancestral seat of the Duke of Marlborough. We absolutely love Blenheim Palace. <laughs> it doesn't seem like I'm uh, asking for too much. It's not been cheap. Everything is expensive. I mean, it's more than double the cost of an average English wedding. Um, you know, I could have bought my Maserati. Yes, it's a British building, and yes, we're doing an Indian wedding, but we're born and bred here, so it's our venue, right? Raj is one of two Asian wedding planners with permission to hold events at the palace. Because we're at Blenheim, they're quite particular about the way we operate our events. I really want to make sure that we uphold our standards, because it is a great flagship for us. Everything from the planning to the catering has to be perfect. So they've gone for a full plated meal. Obviously, because it's like a British wedding and an Indian wedding. 
We've got a square plate with four square bowls on there. Giant. We just arrived from fucking Spain, by the way. Because they don't want the curries in the middle, like in a restaurant, because you're passing it around like peasants, aren't you? It's just really like shite, you know? So it looks amazing. Mm. And at Blenheim, for 143 people, you'll smash that. But let, mum, let me speak to mum first before anyone does anything. Rukmini is a Hare Krishna Hindu. And the couple have asked Raj to organise a religious and a civil ceremony. There are always, always challenges with this. The English side, or, well, not English, they're Geordies. The Geordie side of the family are really going to be quite nervous about attending an Indian wedding. So what we do on, on, in circumstances like this is that we look after the English side and we try and molly-cuddle them. It's a mission of an event. It's the morning of Craig and Rukmini's wedding. Whatever you need to do, I can organise, so that's... Yeah. 143 guests descend on Blenheim. Good morning, beautiful day. But only 10 of them are Craig's family. Just looks a bit overwhelming, a lot of people, but no, it should be a good day. It'll be colourful, it will be different. But we're, we're not terribly religious, are we? No. So we do accept um, if other people are and they've got different cultures, then we just embrace it. Our daughters, they are so excited because this is a British iconic place and we want to show again to everyone that we're here and we want to be part of this society. Fitting in with Asian protocol isn't quite so easy for Craig. The groom's entrance is supposed to be a big thing. You know, in a very traditional wedding, I would ride on a white horse, um, but I hate horses. But he has consented to wear Indian dress. Hi, Hi. Initially, Craig didn't really want to wear an Indian outfit, but then I had to do a lot of persuading. So, Craig's main concern is to stick to schedule. So the big thing for me, obviously, is that at 3 p.m. we yeah. have to be ready for the civil ceremony. Irrespective of whether all the guests are here or not, we're, yeah. we're starting. Um, and as we all know what Indians are like with timekeeping, um, I suspect a few people <laughs> really, will turn... Really, already? <laughs> <laughs> Free, where's me drummer? Right in front of me. Oh, bring him out, love. It's midday, and with timing so vital, Raj is anxious to get on with the first event. A traditional Hare Krishna rite, the groom must take part in before he can marry. We are here to welcome the best man over here, Greg. The family members, particularly the sisters, are so happy they've doled up just for you. <laughs> There is a part where the groom has to smash this pot. And if he doesn't break this pot, you know, people are going to then turn around and go, oh shit, you know what? They're not going to last. Fucking, the wedding's gone. You have to smash this and give us your best Jackie Chan move. Oh. <laughs> Here we go. Now Craig is officially welcomed by Rukmini's family. The Hindu marriage ceremony can go ahead. But not before Raj puts Craig's clan at ease. And then what Mum will do, she's going to do like a little arti ceremony and sort of give him a blessing and then we'll all walk in together. The fear I have is of doing something wrong and offending somebody. But I've come to the conclusion that as long as you listen to what they're saying, do the best you can, put a smile on your face, then hopefully you're not going to offend anybody. Fine, OK. Craig's cousin Claire's not the only one who's nervous. Rukmini is ready to make her grand entrance. She's been giving me hints about the dresses and things, but I've not seen them. Well, I knew she was going to look beautiful and stuff, and I, you know, I had to, I had to make sure I told her that because <laughs> she'd never forgive me if I didn't, which I did. I think it might have been a little bit of a culture shock, but he's grasped it really well. But he's obviously marrying me, so he sees something in it. <laughs> Before the priest can pronounce them man and wife, he invites some ancient words of wisdom. What advice can you give young Craig here? How can you lead a successful married life? Do as you're told. Do as you're told. Always 
girls have two televisions, <laughs> one upstairs and one downstairs. <laughs> If I thought Craig, when he was born, would end up marrying an Indian girl, and probably back in those days, no. Even 20 years ago, no. But now, in this modern day and age, then yes. The bride and the groom are officially husband and wife! Craig and Rukmini are not unusual. In Britain today, almost one in ten relationships are mixed. But back when Raj was growing up, things were very different. I remember very, very clearly, I was about seven and I was getting racially abused at school and stuff and I was being called a burnt sausage. That was it, I was a burnt sausage. Fuckers, right? So, born here, I've been brought up in a Catholic school and they want me to blend into society and become an English lad. Mum and dad, mum and dad out. I remember looking in the mirror and saying, why the fuck have I got brown skin? This is something that I've overcome now, but it scars you, doesn't it? it? Scars you for life, you know. They smile. The beautiful thing about it all right now is that the UK is a multicultural society, and uh, people will talk to other people with different coloured skins and treat them like Brits. So it was uh, quite amazing this morning, wasn't it? It was really good. I really enjoyed it. It's nearly 3 p.m. Craig's deadline for the civil ceremony to start. The problem that we have is that when you come to Blenheim Palace, everyone just fucks off around the palace. <laughs> so we're trying to get everyone back in again. Guests gathered. It's wedding time, take two. So you definitely got the rings. It's not the way I would normally dress. Everybody say I am part of the British gentry now or gentleman club or something. It's like having the best of both worlds. <laughs> we are not neglecting each other's way of life. Right, well, that's him married off, so what now? I know. <laughs> what do you think? Yeah. I think that's enough for the minute. <laughs> The amount of effort and time we put into planning this and all the rest of it, and then it just goes roosh, and it's done. I can't believe we're almost at the end of it now. Girls, 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 go. Let's take a trace. The other person takes two glasses. Jesse, can you heat this food up, please? Gluten-free. So far, Raj has stuck to schedule, but he still has another hurdle to face, the Anglo-Indian feast. I think it's more challenging when you have the two cultures hitting together. You always get, you know, vegetarians, for example. You get people that, you know, um, don't want to have meat on their table because they're veggie, but there's meat on the gig. Well, I'm having English, not because I don't like Indian food, but I just thought I would just rather have the English food. I'm not. I'm having Indian food, and I'm a vegetarian, and I am in my element because I can eat anything. <laughs> you guys all right? I'm fine, fine yeah? you know? So far, so good? Everything is so fine, you know? I can't believe it's so good, you know? But it's Craig and Rukmini Raj really needs to keep happy. They have been fantastic today. <laughs> Can everybody please a round <laughs> Oh, I can't smile anymore. I really can't. My jaw is hurting so much. All I wanted was everything to go smoothly, everyone to be well fed. I'm just so happy. I had a really great day. It's 11pm, and the newlyweds get a send-off, Asian style. Without families and friends who love you, you know, what is life? Yeah, it's, it's all about love. <laughs> and there's one final nuptial nut to crack. What we do on the leaving ceremony, we put the coconut under the tie and it has to break the coconut, so what we tend to do is just put a little hairline fracture in it to make sure it does, because if it doesn't break, and everyone starts getting freaked out again that they're going to have a divorce in two years, so uh, do we tamper with the coconut? This one.
in Withenshaw, Manchester, wedding planner Raj Samaya and his team are battling for a bigger share of the booming Asian wedding business. Just uh, thought I'd let you know we've got another event on the 21st. Bring you three events today. It's a market worth over £300 million. We're a summer-based business. If we don't sell, we're dead, right? We've got a massive wage bill. We don't have any regular income coming in like a corner shop that we used to have. It is all about building our reputation and not letting people down. In five days' time, Pyle have a chance to break the lucrative London market catering a huge Ibiza-inspired wedding in Canary Wharf for city workers Smithy and Samit. Well, we've been together for about eight years now, I think. Seven and a half. OK, if want to be it, <laughs> exactly. The 26-year-olds met at university in Leicester. We were like all the same group of friends yeah. and we all lived in the same block of um, halls and we were all on the same course. Um, and then <laughs> one thing led to another. Oh, God, don't say that. And, um, <laughs> Oh, so the proposal, well, I took it to Thailand. Um, so I'm just like getting so. ready for dinner, doing my makeup. I just step out of the bathroom and he's on one knee, like this yeah. with the <laughs> ring. And I was like, my first words are, what the hell? Yeah. Mm. And then he was like, oh, you haven't actually answered yet. I was like, oh, I don't really have a choice, do I? <laughs> and that was the proposal. I still think to this day she hasn't said yes. Yeah, so. I never said yes. Yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine me on a horse? Smithy and Samit's dream wedding will cost well over the average British spend of £21,000. They're lavishing a five-figure sum on a top-end venue, entertainment and a banquet of 14 dishes for each of their 300 guests. Probably so it's maybe double or treble the cost of a normal wedding. Her parents actually said to us, well, you can either have a house deposit or you can have a wedding. And I don't Did know. Did they? No one tells me anything. We kind of thought about it and we thought, no, we want a big wedding because that's something we're going to look back on. Well, if I would have known, maybe I would have wanted the house deposit. Back in Manchester, at Pyle's Catering Kitchen, half a tonne of curry and over 2,000 canapes are being prepared for Smitty and Samit's wedding banquet. Auntie, yeah. namaste. Martin is supervising. Well, we make everything fresh, but in particular these samosas, the two aunties come in and do 10,000 of them. You can't afford to make a mistake. This industry is all about word of mouth. So if you do a good job, you might get two jobs out of it. If you do a bad job, you lose 20 jobs, and that's the pressure. Tomorrow is the big day, and nephew Cav will be in charge. They've got drinks and canapes at 3 o'clock, and what are they going to do till yeah. 6? They're going to be leathered uh, in three hours as well, by the way. On the last meeting, we yeah. were insisting you need to serve starters. Bride was adamant she didn't want to serve starters. I think I, I'm a laid-back bride, but he, he called me bridezilla. You were the worst bridezilla ever. But that's just because people are difficult to deal with. No, you make everything difficult. No. <laughs> I just like things the way I like things. All right, cool. We've got our, uh, we've got our instruction here from the bride, mate. It's what we do. It's 9am on Smithy and Samit's wedding day. I want the tea, coffee inside the hot pot. The food delivery is late and Cav's increasingly worried. Hi Mo, where are you? Still waiting for the delivery. Setting up the kitchen equipment in a corridor is also a logistical challenge. So what we're going to do, we're going to build a kitchen down here, protect the flooring because it's like special marble flooring, it's about... 200 grand if you put a stain of oil on there. And we're going to build hot cupboards along here. I'm just splitting my cutlery up, my crockery, so, you know, for the turnaround. Just also make sure that you've got a walkway there because yeah. you see it's a fire exit. No, I'll make sure that walkway is protected now. The food arrives. It's just 20 minutes late, but Cab still has pre-wedding jitters. From our side of it, the bigger thing that could go wrong is the clients themselves now, not turning up on time. Rolling up in super luxury wheels is de rigueur for the modern blinged up wedding. Smithy's Aston Martin is worth over £80,000. 
You see that car there? Belongs to my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Poor man with a rich friend. <laughs> She's with the caterer. She'll help you. This is my second daughter. I'm going to give away. I'm feeling very excited. <laughs> Specially commissioned jewel encrusted dress is also essential. We do love bling. Some of the costume jewelry that these ladies buy is really expensive, between five and ten grand. And you don't want to get robbed either, do you? You don't want to knock about fucking with insurance with a big fucking thing on your neck, you know, which is real. One block away, Groom Samit is preparing to make his entrance. Uh, probably a bit more stressed more than anything. I haven't really had time to feel nervous. Steed mounted, Samit progresses through Canary Wharf like a Bollywood hero. Well, sort of. Captain the chefs, can you guys all come down please and clear this uh, uh, horse shit up? Break it down nicely, yeah. OK, well then put it on the side, don't put it in the bin. Because it's, it's just a mess here. In the kitchen, Cav is clearing up another problem. No, colour blue is food. Yes. That tissue that you just put in there should be in the orange. His staff are falling foul of his strict recycling policy. All, like, kind of general waste goes in here plastics, cardboard, tissues, and all food goes in the blue. That's all I just need the staff to be doing. They've got to protect their venue, and that's what I need to do. It's 1 p.m., and escorted by her sisters, Smitty finally walks down the aisle. I think Although we're quite modern, we're quite traditional at heart. I'd say we're 100% British, but you know we've obviously got those traditional values, and we know kind of where our roots are. So we and Smithy are as compromised now. I'm quite happy with the way our children do. I'm happy she found someone herself. That's one thing. Some parents they don't like it, but I didn't mind. While Smithy and Samit head off to get change, the guests took into champagne and over 2,000 canapes before the reception. But not all of Raj's clients have the same priorities. So you've got the seat guys, right? Our warriors, they're the guys who just want to get absolutely smashed on an event and probably smash each other up. Then you've got like the goodies, they just want to eat and go, do one. And then you've got the Muslims, meat eating, soft drink community. Smithy and Sumit are Hindu Punjabis. Now these guys are our hooty tooties of our world. So what they want to do is they want to have a massive, big fuck off reception, smash it up, and then go. Or they would if the bride and groom hadn't gone a wall. Hello, hi. Where are you guys? But I need you guys here now, mate. I want. I need bride and groom ready for entrance in it. It's the only thing, really. Delays. Only time things can actually go wrong. 30 minutes later... So we thought we'd just take a little drink with all of our closest friends and cousins. We were in the park uh, celebrating our friends' union. We work in the city these days. Um, it's Jager bombs, like the standard Thursday, Friday nights. Go home, have your roti and sabji. Yeah. Let's go to sleep. The feast is the most critical part of the wedding. With the reputation of the business at stake, Cav can't afford any mistakes. So we could have the best curry sitting in that pot. If it's cold, shit. So be careful with your oil as well, mate. And presentation has to be perfect. Jesse, Surinder, uh, I'm going to kick this guy off the site. Look at this. He needs to get the oil off. No, it is going. Do not argue with me on site. I'm telling you right now. To end the celebration, Smithy and Sumit have ordered an Ibiza-inspired party. Complete with 10-foot-tall dancing robots. I like 
like to rave. I like LEDs, I like lights, I like random things. So I just, I just came across like a robot, these robot dancers, and I thought, yes, I want one of them. It's midnight, and the first guests are leaving the wedding, blissfully unaware of the thousands of hours and tens of thousands of pounds that have gone into it. Yeah, no, it's been a really, really good day. My friends and family have put so much effort into this day. It's been fantastic. It's been amazing. It's been the best night of my life. First part, paying that much yeah, money. It's worth it. Having a smile on my daughter's face. We smashed it today. No, as in, no, we did smash it. If you guys had a Jaeger bomb here, I'd join you for one. This is my marketplace, right? This is my playground. The fucking right on it. It's halfway through the wedding season, and Raj is in London at one of Britain's biggest Asian wedding fairs looking to meet the rich in need of planning for their celebrations. If you get wealthy bride and grooms that want amazing event management and catering, they know where to come now. Okay. Who's getting married? My sister. Oh, really? Brilliant. If you need anything, you know where we are. Yeah. In an ultra-competitive industry, reaching a wide audience is vital. We want to become the finest, most beautiful wedding catering business. We started it with Insure, we ended up in London. Uh, why not go into Europe and then world domination, right? But for Raj's next clients, 25-year-old accountant Medea and 27-year-old financial consultant Nizam, a return to tradition is their top priority. I didn't really want, you know, for you to leave your career. Obviously, you can do that later when you have kids. And uh, obviously, it's going to be different. You know, going to a new place. Yeah. Pakistani-born Madia lives with her parents in Cheshire. But once she's married, she'll move 74 miles away to Nizam's home in Wales. I'm just thinking of my family and the, the thought of leaving them. That just, you know, makes you emotional. Nizam, who also came to the UK as a teenager, is less nervous. Like many British Asians, the couple met through relatives. For the first time when I saw her, and I, I thought she was the one. She was the first one. Uh, got positive vibes. Um, I think it makes it a lot more special. I mean, he liked me, and then my parents asked me, and I said yes. But the thing is, obviously, he chose me. It's not only the parents chose me. I don't think there are many arranged marriages anymore in this country. I think most of them are introductions, you know, with a little bit of influence sometimes. The parents might introduce them and say, it would be good if you did, you know, but they can't anymore. The, the boys and girls are too strong nowadays. Come on, in your bed. Raj met his other half, Sheetal, 22 years ago at a family party. So this is my lovely wife. She's my joint MD. Aren't you lucky to have a husband like me? Could have been luckier. I think you're taking the piss. But I'm lucky. It's like throwing the dice. She didn't get two sixes. She got like a five and a six. She is the world to me, mate. We are in the wedding business. So I can't say I'm going to divorce her, can I? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Raj can't afford to fall out with Medea and Nizam either. Pyle are organising the couple's Muslim marriage ceremony and a post-wedding feast for 40 guests, both to be held at the bride's family home. It's going to be an amazing event. It's going to be a bit of a challenge. Obviously, on a Muslim wedding, there's no dancing, no alcohol. Um, you know, the, the meat must be halal. There were too many in the kitchen, yeah. you know. We didn't need all that stuff. Did we not? There's only one staff member, Raj Truss, to run such a traditional event, his mum, Tarla. A lot of people used to be really scared of my mum. She's very, very um, hard-skinned. You know, she's an old Indian woman, you know, and they, they don't give a shit. They're, no bullshit there, mate. It's exactly what it is. <laughs> it's the day before the wedding. Medea's dad has asked Tarla to set up a marquee for the wedding banquet. 
If anything is not right, <laughs> go, go to him because he, whatever I say, he's accepting it. <laughs> how how do you like it up to now? It's beautiful. Yes, yeah? really beautiful. Oh, oh wow! Look at that. ये मैं आपको बाद में दिखाना चाह रहा था. Sixty-seven-year-old Tala has been in the business for 23 years and was one of the first Asian wedding planners in the UK. You know, the involvement of like Indian weddings was from school halls. You know, and then uh, we used to have like 700 or a thousand people. It'd be a big lunch, and then they'd have an Indian wedding, and then bang, you know, plastic plates, really simple buffet. Mum would probably cook all the food with her aunties and stuff, and that'd be it. It's done. As we went from sort of school halls into town halls, then we went into the realms of hotels. The hotels used to say it's a music to our ears when you are here. If you hear, we don't have to do anything because we would look after the whole thing. We didn't plan it to have a business like that. This is created itself. It's 4 p.m. on the day of Medea and Nizam's wedding, and Tala has been directing operations for over two hours. And when you pick these glasses back, make sure it goes in the right crates. This gives me thrills. I would drop anything to run an event or plan an event. I love it. Since the couple have opted to hold the event at home, Tala's challenge is to turn the garage into a makeshift catering kitchen. So anything else you need a part of that or...? Ice. Right, I'll sort that out. The all-important naan oven will have to be rigged in the garden. OK, well, all right, but I'll send thanks. it to you. Yeah. Yeah, I'll thing. get this dog. If the food is not right, and the service is not right. Everything else, the deco, anything else you do doesn't just come into it. The food has got to be 100%. It's 6 p.m. and the guests and Nizam arrive for the nikah, the Muslim wedding ceremony that was created over 1,400 years ago. We used to do these nikahs for five and six hundred and seven hundred people in hotels, but it's really funny how they've taken it back home. So it's really weird that we're in the back half end of Jeedal somewhere and the groom's dressed there like some prince with all his relatives around him. It just feels as if we're back home in Pakistan. I'm all right. Yeah, just a bit nervous. Yeah. You need someone to share your life with, especially someone you love to be there in, for better for us. Finally, the wait is over. Shaking. Are you shaking because you know it's going to happen soon? By using Hagmer, Eka Hazard, Pond, Bahuk Mukhtatala, Batka, the Sharia. It's really important about the nikah because what they do is they, they take the blessings from the bride separately to the groom. So they talk to the groom, they'll do his nikah, they go up to the bride and they'll do her nikah in the bedroom with the mullah and the, and the uncles. La ilaha illallah Muhammadur ashahad wal la ilaha. We always know from childhood this is going to happen. And there's a certain age that is going to happen also. Most of our brides have to act a little bit that they are sad. You know, they have to make sure that they're not laughing at the wrong places, you know, because it is disrespectful in our culture. The mayor thought that now she's on her own. It gives me jitters. Every father feels the same. I'm <laughs> telling you. It's 8 p.m. and in the garage, Tala is driving the food service. We don't have anything anywhere. Sometimes we don't even have any water facilities there. Pile chef Mark is preparing part of the halal meal in the garden. This is tandoor roasted tandoori lamb. They're also having a chicken biryani and a chana masala. 
Several of Raj's kitchen staff are Brits who have learnt Indian cooking. For a white chef any day of the week, mate, brown chefs are really hard work, proper precious. And they're like, they just still rock up with their dirty t-shirts with blood all over them and stuff. You're like, no, no, it's fine. In the village, this is what we do. What's your problem? I never killed anyone before. So, oh, fuck, mate. But at least look like you're going to be clean. Do you know what I mean? And then they'd like rock up with sticks and stuff, stirring curry. Like, fucking check the curry, you knob. <laughs> you know? In Cheadle, Tala has a problem with the naan oven. It's a gas one, and it doesn't seem to be heating in enough. It doesn't matter whether they spend fucking quarter of a million quid on their wedding. If that chicken tikka or that naan bread goes out cold, you're fucking dead. You've got to make sure that food goes out hot. I've turned their own domestic cooker on the grill. They want nuns. They're going to get nuns. Improvisation, which comes in very, very handy. <laughs> Lovely. One way or another, all 40 guests are served the wedding banquet. Absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Couldn't have been better. Everybody saying how fantastic it is today. But what we have been struggling here in the back, nobody knows. It's like I think she's earned her respect. She is the mum of Payal, is she really? And when there's problems and when there's incidents and things, it's nice to have that person there who's already dealt with these things in the past. If mum's there, don't need to worry. Oh, what a nice guy. Pretty <laughs> Proper Indian. It's nearing the end of the wedding season and Payal events are pulling out all the stops to cater for every trend in the modern Asian wedding market. There's such a variety of different people that we deal with, you know, in my brown world. Hindu Gujaratis and Bengalis and Muslim peoples, and there are massive differences between the weddings. Yeah, this was the day of the Ashiwad happening. Raj's next wedding is his biggest event yet. A 500-guest Hindu extravaganza for Yorkshire businessman Rohit and his fiancée, Annika, a doctor. And obviously bringing the gifts. The couple met briefly as children and kept in touch on the internet. We never knew that we'd actually kind of meet face to face. And then when we did meet face to face, yeah, she was completely different to everything she told me on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> no, not totally different. <laughs> Quite not a lot totally different. different. I used to say things like I was really tall, uh, didn't wear glasses. <laughs> so then when he met me, he was just like... <laughs> but then um, we went out a few times. We, we wanted to ask each other a question, is this friendship or is it blossoming into something else? And um, then we, we decided it's a little bit more than friendship. Back in Manchester, it's all hands on deck. Because then they want full event management, they want someone to come run it, they want an MC to move everyone around. So, you know, just our reputation lies with this one event. So after all the hard work that we put ourselves through, you fuck this up and you're dead. You've got the badge, you've got the uh, pops for the yes. chuckles and everything. I'm going to back down. Pile manager Martin is helping coordinate. All these kids you know, we're marrying, they're all third generation, aren't they? They're all doctors and surgeons and, and, and you know, and they're careers. dealing with me and him. Thinking, <laughs> you know, what are, doing, what are you doing in here? But at the end of the day, they come and they trust us because we're the best. Bile have promised to deliver an eight course banquet and keep the Bengali Hindu wedding on track. Very go further forward. But at the venue, Raj already has a problem. We've just got a, a bit of a situation with the vans and stuff, because this is the only loading into the hotel. So I've got uh, two supplies I've turned up for the evening event, which is really annoying right now. But the horse box guy, because uh, we're doing the horse arrival from the bus station, there's no parking around there. And I've not really got full authority yet, so I'm sort of blagging it right now. Martin is supervising 500 table settings. Beautiful. And he's also got his hands full, displaying Rohit and Annika's five-tier £1,000 wedding cake. So what we need to do is line all these pillars up so they're straight. With Raj having that kind of Asian streak in him, working for Raj, I means 24-7. So you have to kind of balance what he wants out with 
keeping married and looking after the kids and everything. I shouldn't be running about like this at my age. What's that got to do with anything? I'm too old for all this shit. I'm going to retire. No. You want to see his pay slip? Well, I, do... I don't get paid much in this company. You know, I no. work hard for you and all that, and you don't pay me enough. You're a fucking liar. Yeah. All right. It's 2pm and the guests are gathering. Annika is kept away from prying eyes until her grand entrance. But it's time for Rohit's arrival ceremony. Oh, overwhelmed with excitement and everything at the moment. It's just mad, mad, mad. Nice smile there, Rohit. Nice smile, mate. The bus driver's got a little bit irate with me and I was stopping them, but you just got to get on with it. This is uh, an event planner's life, right? Can I have the groom side first and the ladies at the same time? Let's go! We're getting there, mate. Usual Indian wedding. <laughs> Annika's grand entrance is more sedate. You looked absolutely beautiful. You know, I'm just really happy to see you. You know, he just looks stunning. Um, and just looked how I thought he would look. You know, I don't see him that much like that, so it's just very different for me to see him in Indian clothes. The bride's dreamt about coming down the aisle, hasn't she? For how long? Okay, probably all her life, right? So I want to make her dreams come true, don't I? And it happens every week, and every week it's the same feeling. It'll never go away. Right, next three, come on, let's go, let's go. It's 6 p.m. Right, clean it up there, then go up to the back of the queue. Martin's directing the team in the basement kitchen. There's a menu of eight different dishes and five vats of rice to serve to the 500 guests. You've got lamb chops. You're going up the stairs, left, right, up the stairs. It's going to be a bit of a mission, this. We've got four flights of stairs to go up, and by the time the food hits the top, it might not be as hot as it should be. Rice, please, chef. Take a rice. Give me a naan bread. Let's evacuate the building. Jokes. We just made fresh rice. When you open the rice, a lot of steam comes in. It's a really old, shitty extractor, so it's just set the fire alarm off. Not that the guests or the newlyweds notice anything amiss. That's how we'd yeah. always imagine like our wedding, isn't yeah. it? It's like a dream come true at the moment. Yeah. I love her a lot. May it like, last forever. They love that boom when all that confetti goes all over. They just, they just love it. Smashed it. Good job. <laughs> Everybody's happy, groom's happy, bride's happy, dad's happy, is he paid? <laughs> and as wedding season draws to a close, Raj is one step closer to his dream of cornering the Asian wedding business. We've had an incredible July and August this year, and people have to take us seriously now. It was like a, a massive milestone for us. Back in Manchester. <laughs> Don't tell Cheers, you, tell. Cheers, mate. Raj and Martin are already looking to the future. I think it's going to be massive next year. We're going to hit the gay market. And I've got a gay wedding show in January. They want our tits and tinsel. They want all our, you know, all the... The fun factor. Absolutely. Cheers next year, mate. Cheers, 15 buddy. it is. Yeah.